Hello and welcome to Curiosity Taught the Cat. I'm Jack. I'm Julia. And today we are going to be talking about the hog-nosed bat. You want to go ahead and jump right in? Yeah, so the hog-nosed bat uh, does have a nickname and it's called the bumblebee bat, um, which I'm sure you're listening and going, why is it called the bumblebee bat? But we will get into that when we talk about what it looks like. Um, and as to where it's found, it is found in Western Thailand and Southeast Myanmar. So it occupies limestone caves in this area, and they're usually outside things like evergreen or deciduous forests is where they inhabit there. Yep. And then getting into its appearance and all that, and why it is called the bumblebee bat, it is actually because of its size. So the hog nose bat weighs less than a fourth of an ounce and is approximately an inch in length. So this is not its wingspan. This is its body. And as, as you can see here, the hog nose bats are tiny. Not only are they the smallest species of bat, they might be the smallest mammal in the world if going by length and not size. They are absolutely tiny. And as you can see for uh, as for like coloring and whatnot, they have a reddish brown or kind of gray coat. Uh, so they're not extremely colorful, that very muted dark color, as you see with a lot of other bats as well. And then just going into physical characteristics, it's a pretty typical bat shape, I would say. Uh, but they do have some interesting characteristics, like in uh, the pictures you can see, they have almost like a pig-like snout. Um, and as well as their ears, their ears are relatively large when you consider the size of their body. Um, and as well as their eyes, their eyes are considered large, um, but we can't really see a lot of it because of the fur covering it up, but they do have very large eyes as well. Um, and they do have, um, again, they have pretty big wings for the size of their body, and this is because they hover a lot. Um, so when they go out to eat and stuff, they use these wings to hover more than to try and flap around very fastly all the time. Yep. They also have extra webbing between the hind legs. So their back legs, you can see that they'll have webbing between them as well. And the webbing helps them to uh, control their movement as they're flying. So they get a lot more tight movement compared to things that might not have that. And then, uh, as you can see in a couple of the pictures, I believe, you can see them hanging. This is very typical of bats. You'll see this a lot. So they have very strong legs and claws. The way a lot of bats are able to do this is they have toes that curl and it allows them to roost with these. And then they'll have this tendon locking mechanism that kind of makes it so when their feet are like that, they stay like that. They have to consciously unlock the tendon to get down. So it allows this posture to occur without uh, consuming much energy. They don't have to think about holding themselves there. They just do it. And then getting into what it eats, um, the hognose bat is uh, mostly insect diet, so it's an insectivore. Um, it feeds at um, dusk and dawn for about 30 minutes and 20 minutes, and this is the only time that it comes out of the cave. So for about an hour a day is when it comes out, and it's only to feed. Um, and so they will forage around the nearby forest for these insects, and they eat things like spiders, you know, insects in that area. Um, and they will actually eat most of these in the air. Um, it's very hard for um, most bats to land and take off again. And so um, with this, when like the insects are flying through the air or they're jumping around on the trees, they'll just go in and snatch them out of the air because it's the easiest thing to do for them. Yep. And uh, as for how they hunt, it's probably one of the most well-known ways that an animal hunts uh, in the world. They use echolocation. If you don't know what echolocation is, don't worry, I'll explain. So echolocation uh, is similar to like a submarine pinging to see if there's things around. They send out these signals um, using these very high-pitched signals with their mouth. They have these big ears because they're waiting for that sound to bounce back towards them. So depending on how long it takes for a sound to bounce back, how loud it is when it bounces back, the bat can create a image in its head, a map of everything around it based on the return of these echoes of these sounds that bounce back towards them. So that's how they know exactly where these insects might be in the air. And then just going on to the predators it has, um, you can probably think of it in the area, anything like larger birds, snakes, squirrels, and even cats in the area. Just because they are so small as well, just opens up for a lot of other predators in the area for them to eat. Yep. And then jumping into mating, uh, it's one of the reasons uh, we'll get into that has to do with their numbers currently. So females give birth annually to a single offspring. And this most likely is because of their size. They are absolutely tiny. It would be almost impossible for them to have a, a bigger clutch than just one baby. So they have one offspring every single year. And the, the mating takes place at the as the winter ends. So by springtime, the females are ready to have a single baby. And then after they are born, you can imagine the babies are extremely tiny, super small. 
um, and they will actually be attached to the body of the mother around the waist, even when she is out feeding. So if they're small enough, she will carry them with her as she goes out to feed. Mm -hmm. But as they get um, too big and they start growing, they will start to be left in these caves to roost. And it can be several months before um, the babies are mature enough and their wings are mature enough to actually fly and go out and find food on their own independently. Mm -hmm. And this use this independence phase is usually about uh, one year. And then just going into their family and society, um, as you can imagine, bats in caves, they do gather together. Um, so in these caves, there's an average of about 100 per cave, um, but they can range anywhere from 10 members to 500 members. So it just depends on the area, how big the cave system is and things like that. Um, but that's the range it can have with that. Um, and another difference with this bat is their spacing for roosting. So um, if you can imagine some like videos and pictures, a lot of bats stay really tightly close together in these caves. Um, but these bats actually are spread out more far apart. They have a lot more room. Um, and it's believed that is because they don't have to rely on body heat from one another like most species of bats do. And this is to do with the location and the limestone caves. So they're in an area where it's hot all year round. So they don't have to stay as close together as other species. Yep. And then getting into population size, I touched on this earlier. Uh, the population size of the hognose bats is not doing great. There, it is decreasing and is currently listed by the IUCN as near threatened. And some of the reasons for this are going to be stuff like habitat degradation, disturbance of roosting sites. So humans have been associated with exposing the natural environment of these creatures to different chemicals and bacteria, which can harm everything, including their food source, as well as places where they might go or even get them sick. Uh, and as a result, large numbers of them have been wiped out in no time at all. And another big thing that I mentioned is the uh, disturbance of roosting sites. So when humans go exploring through their natural environment of these bats, it causes them stress and confusion. And this stress and confusion can lead to them not eating and they may not mate. And like I said, they only give birth to one baby a year. So it is crucial that they are able to mate. So when they miss the opportunity, that's just another year they're not able to mate and their numbers go down even further. Uh, but good news is that there is conservation put in place for these bats. So experts and scientists are trying to figure out things like the age of their maturity, uh, mating rituals, and more so that they can try to get them to reproduce faster in captivity. Again, just to boost their numbers as much as they could. Um, but it is hard to study them in their natural environment because of their location and how small they are. Um, and it's, it's hard to tell when they are able to mate because they're already such tiny bats. So it's very difficult to find when they actually do mate and are mature. Um, but we're still working on that just to try to boost their numbers a little bit. Yeah, when a creature's that tiny, it's hard to tell the difference between what's an adult and what's not an adult. Because it almost looks the exact same to us. And then, uh, so that wraps up all the the more technical stuff. We do have a couple fun facts. Uh, so this particular species bat, so the kitty hognose bat is the one I'm talking about here. It was only discovered in the early 1970s. So this is a species bat that we haven't really known anything about. We only have been, they've only been around in our world for 50 years. So we haven't really had the opportunity to do a lot of research compared to other bats. Um, and along with this, um, the scientist that found him was um in it's a scientist from thailand and um, another name for this is the kitty's hognose bat and that is named after the scientist so this along with a british scientist um discovered the species and unfortunately uh the thai scientist passed away and so the british scientist named the species after him in his honor yep uh, and I mentioned earlier, they are the smallest species of bat and possibly the smallest mammal in the world. And then the last fun fact that we're going to have to talk about uh, is uh, this is something that happens with other creatures. You may see this where a bat will adopt other babies. So if a mother does not have a baby, um, if there is another baby that's abandoned by their mother or the mother dies while they're out for food, there's an opportunity for the mother to step in and adopt this baby and carry on and help keep their numbers up. And that wraps up everything that we have on the Hognos Bat. Thank you for tuning in. Um, tune in next week where it'll be the last spooky animal that we talk about for the month out of October. And it is going to be the Hellbender Salamander.